Hello and welcome to Pastoral Ministry. Today we're looking at the topic, Beginning Well. I'm Dr. Mewborn, and it's good to be with you. Let's begin our study. I want to start by giving you some funny sketches or comics that are so appropriate for today. It's talking about beginning well as a pastor. What do most people think of when they think of a new pastor coming in? What is the ideal pastor? Well, this says, The ideal pastor has the strength of Samson, the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of David, the patience of Job, the skill of Luke, the endurance of Moses, the agility of Zacchaeus. And this is what a lot of people think of when they're getting a new pastor. They think he can do everything and everything well. Now, some people will be optimistic in that way and expect the best. So the pastor's coming in with an A-plus rating. And so what happens is, is the first mistake the pastor makes is usually costly in this sense, that if, um, if he doesn't have a good rapport with the people or if he doesn't come in with great humility, it'll be a hard, uh, it'll be a hard thing to overcome those major mistakes at the beginning, which most pastors, all of us make mistakes. And so if that happens and you had an A+, plus, well, then now you're down and maybe you're at a B or B+, plus, or maybe you're at a C, whatever it might be. Um, you're at that point where you've lost that ideal pastor type of persona that you've been given. And I think that's, you got to be careful about that, but this is what people think of for the pastor. And we have to be careful about thinking about that. But really what's happening is like this pastor here going in, welcome our new pastor. He's sweating bullets. He's afraid to walk through the doors. He doesn't know what to expect and just fearful, not only of the process, but learning about the people, afraid of what he doesn't know, afraid of what he might know. There's all types of things, but beginning well as a pastor means that I'm coming in and I'm prayerful. I've been on my knees. I've been humble through this process and I'm seeking God's guidance in this. And so once a pastor search team has found a new pastor and once they agree on him, he's been brought before the church and the church calls him or has him come in view of a call and he's voted on. Well, then comes the process of starting and starting well. And however that pastor does it is very, very important. So for me and different ministry opportunities that I've had, uh, it is a little nerve-wracking on the front end. But if you go in saying, this is where God has called me, this is what God's doing in my life, it normally is a wonderful experience, and you can embrace it and like it a lot. Uh, here's some other little sketches. It says there, um, New Hope welcomes Reverend Billy Whitcomb. It says, Brother Thomas, here we'll take your hat. Brother Fiedelstein will take your coat, and Dr. Nicely will handle the baggage from your previous church. I think a lot of people expect a new church or new pastor coming in to have a lot of baggage with them. And so there has to be somebody designated to handle the baggage of from the previous church. So I think that that's kind of funny when you think about that. And then here's another good one. Welcome to our church, even though you're sitting in our family pew. You can just see someone saying this. And I, I have seen this happen too often where um, a visiting couple sits in a seat and the seat has been, um, has been occupied by the same members or maybe the same family for many years. They come and sit in those seats and all of a sudden you've got a huge problem on your hands just because uh, that, that member who's been there for a long time is expecting to have those seats every Sunday. And so I think this is kind of funny when the new pastor and his family are in the, in the, in the seat of some older members there. I love that. All right. I would say this. When you're beginning well, I think what we do is we need to introduce ourselves, but be careful to listen to people. Take care to listen to people when they're talking to you. And, and that's why I love this. Pastor's got, um, hello, my name is Pastor, and he's got that on there. But pretty much that's all he's saying. And the rest of it is he's listening. He's trying to get to know people's names. He's trying to get to know uh, things about different people, where they work, how many kids they have, where do they live, um, those types of things. What churches or what schools do the kids go to, those types of things. So listening well is going to go a long way for any new pastor. So I would say listen well. That's a good way to begin well. And then be positive. I love this picture. It says, who said ministry was stressful? I'm 35 and I feel great. 
it's so so on par with with what a lot of people think of when they think of ministers but i would say attitude determines altitude so however our attitude is towards something we're doing that's going to determine how high we are and and how high we are in other people's eyes and and even our own life what is our attitude like so i think that those things matter so when you're beginning well as a pastor, um, you got to think of a few things. Number one, you got to think of your family. So what does your family need in that moment? It'll matter. When you're coming into a new church, if it's a new location or a new area or you had to move, maybe it's a move that's a two-hour drive away from where you uh, first were in ministry or where you were coming from originally, or maybe it's moving across the country. And so you're moving from, uh, in America, you're moving from Florida, moving all the way over to California. Um, whatever it is, you need to set up your new home. If that's an apartment, if it's a condo, if it's a, um, if it's, it's a, um, if it's a home or whatever it might be, you need to set it up in a, in a, in a special way that is just for your family. So do whatever you can to make it feel like a home. Put up pictures. Uh, make sure that people know that this is where we live and this is, this is where we are setting up our, our nest, if you will. We're settling in. Number two, make family a priority. So when you move to a new location and you're pastoring a, a new church or serving in a ministerial role in a new church, make family a priority. I know that you're going to be getting to know members of that church as time goes on, and you're going to be focused on that, but don't put your family uh, at an arm's length. Don't put them on the back burner. Don't put them in second place. They are your family. Communicate daily with your family. What does that mean? That means to be in constant communication. How are you doing? How are things going at the house? Maybe you're already at work and they're trying to unpack boxes. Whatever it might be, communicate with them daily. Enjoy meals regularly. So go out to eat or come together as a family. Don't, don't start out your ministry just by being gone every night and visiting people. Enjoy meals with your family regularly. And then I would just say have fun. It's a new experience. Everybody's learning something. So have fun. Get out. Go to a park and, and go to see some special show. Or maybe there's something going on uh, local at, the, at a convention center. Maybe at a fairground. Or maybe it's, um, it's just being outdoors. It's, it's doing something with your family. Go on a walk. Whatever it is, have fun. Enjoy what you're doing. Laugh. Laugh as much as you can. That will help you as you start this new ministry. Now get to know your church family is a big deal. And how do you do that? Well, I think one of the best ways to do it is to ask the church to set up a meet and greet, meet, to set up meet and greet opportunities. What this means is, hey, maybe you can set up something where um, uh, the church meets the new pastor, and you have a couple of these, um, you have these a couple of these where, where there's uh, maybe there's a meal served, or maybe it's just snacks or dessert or something like that. Maybe it's right after a service. I think that's good if the church is large. Have where departments or different ministries meet with the pastor. That's a good way to do that. Enjoy meals or meetings with the staff if applicable. So some churches you might go to, they may or may not have a full staff, or may or may not have any other staff other than the pastor. And so um, enjoy meals and meeting with them frequently in the beginning. Help your family connect with others in the church. I think this is key to uh, a long success with any church. If, if your family is kind of isolated and, and you're the one ministering, but they're not part of it, they kind of just tag along at times, then they'll never buy into what's going on. And it's important for them to, to have as much connection as you do when it comes to the ministry. So what are some things that they can get involved with? Look for other families that have kids, maybe the, your kid's age, or look for other people maybe that, you're, that are your age first just to connect with with them. We know as time goes on, uh, some younger couples connect a lot more with older couples um, and, and vice versa. And so it's important for us to think through those connections. How do we connect well? Think about your kids. What can your kids be involved in? Um, think about what are the sports leagues going on in the area. Is there something that your kids like that they'd like to be a part of that's in that area? Then familiarize yourself with the community. 
What's going on in the community? What's this community like? What do they care about? What are some highlights within the community? I've been in communities before where they had special concert nights on Friday nights in the park. And that's kind of neat to go to and you, you meet a lot of people and just walk around and uh, be a part of a, maybe a town square or something like that. But I think those are fun. Learn the seasonal events of your community. I think this is important on the front end, too. If your community does a parade at a certain time or they do a 4th of July event, maybe they do um, uh, uh, Christmas events, Memorial Day weekend stuff, you never know. Uh, whatever that is, try to find that out. Ask people in your church. Uh, look on the town website. See if there's some things that you could find out there. I think that will be helpful. The next thing is gather information and get organized. And I love this because what do you want to do? You want to get organized. How do you get organized? Well, get things like constitution and bylaws, church directory. Find out who the deacons, the committees are, the volunteers and the lay leaders. Get all that information that you possibly can. Um, when I've gone to churches before, one of the first things I did was I get I got the church directory and started looking through it at, uh, for people and and uh, looking up names and looking at faces and trying to figure out who's there. If a church doesn't have a directory, you might show an interest for that, and you can encourage a church to do that because this is one of the best ways to get to know your people. But but get the information that is important. Find out who. Uh, the people are in your church and find out what they're doing in the church. So if they're teaching a Sunday school class, it'd be good to know that they're doing that. If they're serving on several committees, it'd be good to know that. I'd also ask other people who's involved. Um, one of the quick ways that I, I realized the involvement in the church was I had a prayer group. And so in a, in a uh, Friday morning prayer group uh, for men, it was a men's prayer group, I had men come together. Well, I found out pretty quickly by doing that in a smaller church who was who. They shared a lot of what's been going on in the church. Ask about the past. So who did what? And, and uh, how long were they here? And how long have they been here? I think those are great questions to ask. The next thing is um, about gathering information, getting organized, is uh, shut-ins. Visit shut-ins in the hospital patients. Get a list of that so that you can visit them. Get a list of prospects. Who are people that are interested in the church or may have filled out a card, an interest card? Get the church calendar. Um, budget and financial reports. Get those things. And then personal calendar. Start putting that stuff in your personal calendar so you know what's going on uh, as things are coming up. And that's the getting organized part of this I think is so important for you. The next thing is connect with people in the church and the community. So how do you do that? Well, get to know the leaders in your church as well as their families. I think organizing events quickly or having dinner with different folks right at first is very helpful with this, but get to know the leaders of the church as well as their families. Sometimes they'll be paid staff members. Sometimes they'll be lay leaders. Uh, some of the strongest influence in the, influencers in a church are not necessarily paid staff members. Um, some of the most influential people I have seen in the church were people who were just serving a lot in different areas, but they were out witnessing to people, leading people to Christ. They were offering forms of pastoral care. They were helping out in different ministries. So that's something to think about. I would say your first visit should include shut-ins and members in the hospital. I think this is important. And the reason I say this is because this will speak loudly for your heart for people. And it'll get around the church quickly so people know what you care about. They, they know that you care about those who are less fortunate, those who are hurting, those who are suffering from things. So think about shut-ins and members of the, in the hospital. I often say this in pastoral ministry. When you go to visit someone who is a shut-in or in the hospital, you got to think that you're not always just ministering to the person who is suffering from an ailment or someone who is suffering um, from, uh, from a, a debilitating disease or someone who is struggling because, um, because they don't have the, f the financial uh, stability to be out on their own or maybe they don't have the mental capacity to do it. You may never realize this, but you may not notice this at, at first, but, but what you're doing is you're also ministering to their families. Just by you going and seeing them, you're ministering to their families and their friends as well. And so this is a, a very important thing to do. 
I'd also say start visiting all the families the first year if possible. I know in a larger church this is not as possible. You just can't visit everybody. It's just not, you're not able to do it. But I would say make the greatest effort to do this if possible and uh, and get out there and knock on doors and get to know your members. Go have meals with them. Um, introduce your family to them and, and get to know them in that way as well. And then visit prospects when available. I think it's always important to visit prospects. But the first thing that you do when you get into a new church is make sure you take care of the members who are there. Make sure that they're loved first. Then I would say attend small group or ministry fellowships. So uh, it would be important to ask the leadership or ones who are teaching a Sunday school class or a small group, uh, gr- a small group or, or, or even a ministry like a children's ministry or student ministry. Ask them to have some fellowships early on in your ministry so that you can get to know people a little bit more quickly. Connect with people in your community. Get acquainted with other pastors in the area. I think this is wonderful. Not only should we connect connect with people in the community, maybe by being at the park, but get acquainted with other pastors in the area. Be careful making major changes at the beginning of your ministry. I've said this a lot to young pastors and to ministers who are just starting out. Be careful making major changes at the beginning of your ministry. It's not that people don't want change it's not that people hate change. It's that they want to make sure they can trust you in the change. So the more trust you gain, and you can gain at the beginning, it'll, it'll pay great dividends moving forward for you. So it's not that you can't make changes at the beginning. I would just say be careful making major changes. And I will tell you this. If something is going on in a church and you just find out about it, it's the beginning of the ministry there, and you know it's wrong and ungodly, I would call it out and I would handle it, but do it with as much love and grace as possible. And then I would say this, read the Word, believe the Word, live the Word. I want to leave you with these, these thoughts because you need to, to start very well. Well, how do you do that? You start with the Word of God and you read it, believe it, and you live it out, that means your prayer life is strong. That means that your witnessing is strong. That means that your kindness is there, that your love and compassion for others. How do you do it? You stay humble. Stay humble. Stay on your knees. Stay a person that is is in prayer and, and, and recognizing that you, this is not all about your ministry. This is about what God's doing in His church. Number two, stay hungry. Stay hungry, hungry for the Lord, hungry for Him in everything that you're doing. You want to glorify Him. Stay hopeful, meaning this, be full of hope of what God's doing in that church and what He's called you to do there. I would say stay hopeful and then stay helpful. What this means is be a servant. Be a servant. Help serve people as much as possible. You see an opportunity, jump in and serve. And then I would say all of this, do all this in prayer. Pray without ceasing. This is a big part of our ministry. We need to be people that are prayer warriors in the gospel ministry because if we're not, then we're not going to be ha- we're not going to have the right perspective. So make sure that you're a prayer warrior in what you're doing. All right. Well, this has been the lesson beginning well. So good to be with you today. God bless you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.